Well, with her thoughts on the matter, we are now reaching out to Cindy Woodhouse, the AFN Regional Chief for Manitoba. Chief Woodhouse, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Now, as you know, uh, I don't have to tell you, the AFN, along with Cindy Blackstock of the First Nations uh, Child and Family Caring Society, uh, really started fighting for compensation back in 2007. This historic deal is then signed only to have the compensation portion now denied by the Human Rights Tribunal. What's being said about that? What are you hearing right now about how people are feeling? Well, certainly First Nations are, are very disappointed. You know, they were looking, many families, 300,000 families, uh, you know, looking forward to being compensated in the, in, in the, in the months ahead very quickly here and, and only for that to be now uh, washed away from them. Mm -hmm. Washed away from them, as you say. I, at this point, it's a deal on hold. <laughs> Did you have any indication this was going to happen? I know that uh, an appeal from Sydney Blackstock had, had been made, but uh, did you expect this to be the result? I did not. I, I thought that, you know, we were, that it's a First Nations-led approach. We did everything that we could to come up with a, a good negotiated deal. Negotiations, as you know, are very hard. They're not perfect. But I think that it was, you know, a fair deal for many of our First Nations uh, people and communities. Mm -hmm. Now, the tribunal sided with the Family Caring Society in saying that the final uh, settlement agreement does not cover the many people who were, in fact, taken away from their families as children, but resettled outside the First Nations child welfare system. Are you opposed to compensating those that have not been covered according to the tribunal? Well, I'll just, I think I'll, I'll say this. Uh, every First Nation child that was placed uh, into care under the First Nations Child and Family Services Program uh, would have been compensated under the final settlement agreement. In addition, the final settlement agreement includes more people over an extended time frame of 15 years due to the class action. Uh, under, um, you know, the final settlement agreement also includes children who faced a delay denial or service under the gaps um, when it comes to Jordan's principal. So I just, you know, I just think, you know, our only, our only exclusion was uh, on, on in the final settlement agreement are the estates of the uh, deceased caregivers because they agreed upon priority was to get compensation to the children. The estate of the late late uh, Marina Beadle by chat by uh, for example has agreed with this. One of her children is a representative plaintiff in the class action. They fi the, they filed an affidavit in support of the FSA in federal court. Um, we also included non ISC funded and Indigenous Services Canada funded placements because the parties did not agree that they were covered by the CHRT order. Okay, so that said, there are still, a, and I take what you're saying, that there are a number of people, hundreds of thousands of people, covered by the, the, the final agreement, the settlement agreement as written. But what's the harm of waiting until all of this could and address those individuals uh, and estates that uh, the Caring Society is raising issue with? Well, I think, you know, you, negotiations are negotiations. They're just that. Uh, there's no perfect agreement. Uh, we will have to be, we will have to go back and review the tribunal's decisions in detail and then consider the best course of action on how to move this process forward. Okay, determine the next course, the next course of action. And interestingly, that's exactly what we're also hearing from federal ministers because they reacted to the decision when it came yesterday. Uh, but in ahead of actually seeing the the final decision itself and the reasoning for it, what do you think the next steps should be in order to get compensation to individuals quicker than otherwise it would be? Absolutely. Well, you know, we're I'm working on um, some resolutions with my Ma Manitoba chiefs today. I know uh, trying to find a path forward. I know that um, you know even though we're all disappointed in 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 this. Uh, it's a very sad day yesterday. You know, $40 billion is hard to come by. Sometimes government change quickly. And, and even just to get to this point um, took a lot of, took a lot of time. And, and so, you know, certainly we'll never give up on trying to help our First Nations kids. We'll continue to try to go back to the drawing board to see if there's um, something in our toolbox that we can use to try and uh, make, make parts of this work. Uh, and, and we'll have to speak to, of course, the other parties.
mm-hmm. uh, on where their thoughts are. So, so lots of discussions that need to happen. Mm-hmm. And I guess I take it from how you're describing this. Your fear is this is not going to be a matter of weeks or months to resolve, but potentially years, and that's what you're worried about. Yeah, it's very disheartening, you know, to get even just to get this, like the the negotiations that I've been a part of. Even that was very difficult. And I thank the Prime Minister and I thank the Canadian government for, for putting the money in when I requested it and asking them and working in good faith that way only for it to crumble yesterday was very, uh, very upsetting for many, many people. Chief Woodhouse, thank you very much for the time today. Thank you.